So I'm going to start this advanced tutorial by just recapping the manual control behavior options. If I open the up menu, again you'll see that we've got the three different options, always timeout, timeout if automation waiting, and don't timeout. For now let's select always timeout. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to drop that to one second. And I'm going to leave it set as it is, so 10 minutes during the day, 30 minutes during the evening. So in this sort of setting, always time out, what that actually means is if I manually control a light, either by a switch, um, a wall switch, um, or the Xambi app, it will automatically turn itself off after 10 minutes during the day, or after 30 minutes if I was to manually turn on the light during the night. And I'll change it to don't timeout. So at this point, the manual control timeouts at the bottom actually become irrelevant. The reason for that is because we've selected don't timeout, they will never timeout. Therefore, if I manually control a light either by a, from a wall switch or by the app itself, it will, the light will stay on until I then manually turn it off. And the final option again, timeout of automation waiting. That means the light itself will only time out if it is not being controlled by automation. So what can automation actually mean? In this case, it could be a timer or a sensor input, for example. So what that actually means is if the light is not being controlled by a timer or a sensor, it will not time out. If it is being controlled by a sensor or a timer, it will eventually time out after the 10 minute timeout control. However, in the case of a sensor, it's actually that 10 minutes plus the linger time set in the sensor settings. So what you've just seen is an explanation of how manual control behavior works and how manual timeout control works. However, you might be in a situation where you want your manual controlled behavior to work in one way for the network, for example, timeout of automation waiting, but you might have one specific luminaire that you want to give a different type to, of or a manual control to. So if we save that for now, so just as a recap, the default network setting is timeout of automation waiting. But if we go to a luminaire which I have set up in my network, there's a section here for manual control. So as our network is set up to use timeout of automation waiting, you can see that that is actually automatically there is in the behavior option. But you can actually still change that manually. So for this particular luminaire, I might not want it to time out at all. It may be some sort of external light which I want to allow full manual control over all of the time. Once you've changed the behavior type, you can also change the default timeout if you don't want to. So it's right now it says use default. And if you remember, the default that I set was 10 minutes. I could, however, set something else and don't. However, in this particular instance, when I've chosen don't time out, the timeout time is actually then irrelevant. It would only become relevant if I chose always time out. So in this case, this particular luminaire would always time out after five minutes, whereas the rest of the network might time out after 10 minutes. So here I'm going to show an example of manual control overriding an active timer. I have a timer running which turns on my lights at nine o'clock in the morning and keeps them on until nine o'clock in the evening and it's running a scene called 20%. The reason I'm using 20% is it's just the, the lower brightness for the camera even though it's actually still overexposing. So you could see that that timer is running. The other thing that tells you this 
particular luminaire is being automated by something is the at sign or the a sign in the top right hand corner of the actual luminaire that's showing you that automation is controlling that luminaire so it's running under a timer right now purely for demonstration purposes I've changed the timeout manual control, control timeout time ah made a mistake I moved it to one but I only did it for that particular day now it's one minute for the entire week so any manual control will only last for one minute so like I said this is running under automation right now if I manually control it move it up to 80% back down a bit you'll now see that the A has disappeared from the top right hand corner that's telling you that automation is no longer under controlling it because I've manually controlled it. So if we now wait roughly one minute, and I think I'll speed this up, um, you'll see that eventually the luminaire will drop down to, this luminaire will drop down to 20% and the A for automation should reappear in the top right hand corner. It may be some sort of a So here's an example of uh, resuming group and whole network automation. You're seeing the app that I've now created a group, simply called group, and within it I've placed the small luminaire that you can turn see turned on on the left hand side of the screen. I've also added a second luminaire which is the RGB light. I've also added an express switch as well and I've pre-configured it. Button number one will now control the group which is actually the luminaire here on the left. Button number three will resume automation just for that group and button number four will resume automation for the entire network. So here's, <clears throat> so here's an example of what happens when we use these two buttons Again, bear in mind that the RGB light is not a member of a group. So I'll turn on the RGB light with the app. That'll do. 
I'm now going to manually control the light which is controlled by the timer. If I now press button number three, that button was resume automation group. So you can see that it went back from whatever its previous setting was to the 20% dimming level, which the timer is now controlling. Let's control that light again. Instead of this time pressing number three to resume automation just for the group, we'll press number four to resume automation for the entire network. So as you can see, what's happened now is the luminaire controlled by the timer has now gone back to its automated state of 20%, but the RGB light, which was not under control by any form of automation, has now been turned off. That's why it's good to use resume automation group when resuming automation for specific luminaires. That way you don't affect the other luminaires in the network. So in this example I'm going to show you how or what happens when a sensor is overridden with manual control. Let's presume that we walk into the meeting room, the sensor gets triggered, as you can just see. The red light has come on to show in presence on the sensor, and my luminaires come on as it's been triggered. I've got this particular luminaire uh, controlled to number two. The linger time for this particular uh, sensor is two minutes and the reason I've set two minutes is because the manual uh, control timeout is set to one minute so I wanted to set a higher linger time than the manual control timeout. Let's manually control this light meaning we can turn it up on and off, put it to full brightness, down again Let's turn it back up a little bit more. We now need to wait until the red light goes out, which it now has. If we now wait two minutes, even though I've manually controlled the light, it will eventually go back out and automation will start again. As you can see in the app, the A has disappeared. After two minutes, it should reappear. No, it won't because I just triggered the light down. As you can see, the A for automation has now reappeared in the top right of the icon. The reason the light did not go out was because the linger time was already running. So although after one minute, the manual control timeout did time out, there was still one minute left of linger time. Therefore, for the first minute, we had a slightly different color. Then for the second minute, when it was back under automation, it went back to the scene's color which was green, although unfortunately it might not be so visible in the video. So in this example I'm going to show you how automation and manual control can work together. The control hierarchy mode for this uh, one is timeout if automation waiting. If I trigger the sensor here, you'll see that it triggers my green or my RGB light on the left hand side, which is currently green. And I've set the linger time for this uh, one for 10 to 10 seconds, just for the sake of a, uh, an example. The manual control timeout is set to one minute. So here you can see that the RGB light on the left is being triggered by the sensor and the light on the right is manually controlled. It's not being controlled by a timer or a sensor. 
I can simply turn it off or on from the expert switch. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to manually turn off this RGB light which I've assigned to number 2. Now that I'm manually controlling that light, the 1 minute manual timeout is now counting down from 1 minute to 0 seconds. If I stand still so that I don't trigger the sensor for 1 minute, If I now keep triggering the sensor, you'll see that the light does not come on. That's because I've manually controlled the light to turn it off. But if we continue to wait a little longer, you'll see that the manual, ta uh, manual control after one minute will eventually turn the light back on. And the reason the light's going to back up, come back on is because I keep triggering the sensor. If I was to walk away and not control the, uh, trigger the sensor, then it would not see anybody, so the light would not come on, even though the one minute linger time had ended. So because I've been triggering the sensor, um, the linger time was still going, even though it was 10 seconds. And when the one minute timed out, the light came back on, as you see. During all of that, the light on the right hand side, the white light, was never affected. And like I said, that's because we use the option timeout if automation waiting. And because there is no automation automation waiting for this white light, it was never affected. So an example of this can be two rooms, one where you have a sensor, one where you have a manual switch. So if we think about having a dividing line here like this, through there, they could, that could be our dividing line for the two rooms. It allows you to have a network which uses both manual control and automated control.